Hi, I'm Medina Henry, an Associate Director on the Training and Technical Assistance Team here at the Center for Corn Innovation. I joined the Center for Corn Innovation in 2013 when I worked at the Red Hook Community Justice Center. I thought I knew a lot about this organization, and then I saw Greg's 20th anniversary email. I realized there's still so many facts I just don't know. So I think the best way to honor the Center's 20th anniversary is to speak to some of my colleagues and learn more about the Center's history, their work, and what they think the key to the Center's success is. with people at 520 and also traveled around the city to see our operating programs firsthand. I started my investigation where it all began, at the Midtown Community Court. This is something that's always confused me. How can the center have been founded in 1996, but yet the Midtown Community Court started in 1993? The Midtown Community Court was an experiment. It was a demonstration project. And the same individuals who pretty much started the Midtown Community Court started the Center for Court Innovation. Once they saw that the Midtown Community Court was so successful in what it was doing and helping to problem solve, they said, hey, you know what? We can't keep this to ourselves. I think we have something going great here, right? And I think there, the Center for Court Innovation was born. What are some of your fondest memories of your early days at the Center for Court Innovation? There was a lot of hiring happening of young, excited, excitable people who weren't sure what they were getting into as far as the organization or a career path, but we were just very driven and excited to work together. We had been confronted when starting Brooklyn Treatment Court with lots of sort of circumspect suspicion. Many of the Supreme Court officers were, were in, in the group that had some of the most significant doubts. At the graduation ceremony, the sergeant stood up and personally congratulated this particular defendant who had worked so hard, and then announced to the crowd that he felt particularly moved because in his mind, and I'm getting a little emotional just thinking about it now, but he said to the whole crowd, there but for the grace of God go I. And that was the moment when I said, okay, all right, we've really done something here. Our director, Greg Berman, started working for the center's founder, John Feinblatt, in 1993. And I was wondering, what was that like? I found a clip of Greg talking about Feinblatt at the center's 15th anniversary celebration. I met John when I was a much younger man, uh, <laughs> back in 1993, when I had um, somewhat questionable taste in fashion. And um, at the risk of being melodramatic, meeting John was one of the handful of really life-transforming experiences for me. The number one lesson that I ever learned from John is that uh, rhetoric is ultimately meaningless. And at the end of the day, action trumps talk every day of the week. I'm here in Queens, and I'm gonna check out the Queens Youth Justice Center and learn more about what they do here. What's the most challenging issue you tackled or your most challenging moment? It's moments. Um, the population we work with, I, I think you can't help but become invested in them. You know, when you give a youth a task or you got them on the right road and then when you call for curfew, the parents like, they got rearrested. You're like, oh man, like, you know, you get so frustrated because you see the pot potential in them and you're like, if you could only use your power for good, you know? So wait, what's the story with this little fish here, Clubber Lang? Yes, so Clubber Lang is my fish. He's my office pet. Um, if you look around, there are quite you have a office few. Pets? Yeah, there are actually quite a few pets here. So generally, what we have is when kids come in, we'll just run to the kids and be like, oh, who has the best fish? Oh, my fish does this. My fish does that. This is Drago. He got kicked off of my desk and made his way to find his home at Sally's desk. And Sally's been taking good care of him. We Spilled make sure out. that all children, adults, and fish have the best care here. <laughs> 
What are some of the most proud moments that you've had during your time at the Center for Core Innovation? I think in my current role as a citywide coordinator of anti-violence programs, my ability to hire individuals who did not believe that they deserve a second chance. The thing I am most proud of for my time at the Center for Core Innovation is launching the peacemaking program in Red Hook. I think I, I really am proud of the Youth Justice Board program. We have a legacy. I talked to Youth Justice Board alumni who I knew when they were 15 and now they're post-college, post-law school, and it's, it's having a real long-term impact. One of my earliest projects was actually really fun, which was setting up the Times Square Inc. Uh, job training program at the Midtown Community Court. Um, and that was really gratifying for me to be able to work with clients and help them become job ready and actually place them in jobs. At Bronx Shell Witness, I'm most proud of um, helping children and families heal from a very difficult and traumatizing experience and come out the other side often even stronger. I'm very proud of our Harlem Reentry Court evaluation reports right here. I've had a lot of proud moments working here. Um, some have been more local, celebrating the 10th anniversary of the domestic violence courts here in the state and really seeing those blossom and institutionalize throughout New York State. But certainly I've had lots of exciting moments nationally where I've seen those lessons implemented in a variety of communities across the country. I think the thing that I'm most proud of is that an agency took a chance on me, frankly. Um, I wasn't thinking about a, a career in criminal justice. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do and I think the center offers enough different opportunities where you don't feel so siloed into a particular career that one day you're a community organizer, next thing you're a criminal justice practitioner, another day you might be doing research. How has the Center for Court Innovation changed over the years? It's become a much more diverse uh, organization and still working to be more diverse. My then former boss said, oh, you shouldn't apply to Midtown Community Court. They're gonna run themselves out of business. And it wasn't true at all. As a matter of fact, we've, in the last 20 years, done so well that we've created so many operating projects. And I think that the only downsize of that is that I don't know the 400 plus employees that are part of the Center for Court Innovation because we never get an opportunity to all be in the same room together. So why do you think the Center for Court Innovation has been successful and thriving for 20 years? I think we've been successful um, because we're very adaptive. Um, we're able to identify changes that are happening in communities and in the field and create programs and interventions that respond directly to those challenges. The key to the Center's longevity has definitely have to be the employees. But I mean the employees that are in the trenches. I'm talking about our violence interrupters. I'm talking about that caseworker that goes with the domestic violence victim to the court. My parent coaches that go to Social Security or advocate so the parent could get their benefits. I was wondering, um, what it was like for you to go from working at 520 to an operating project? Well, it was quite a transition for me. Working at 520, it was more about like the big picture stuff. Once I came to Midtown Community Court, you know, there was much more face time, right? With clients, with attorneys. And so that was a big shift for me. And I'd say that it's, it's actually a really rewarding experience to be able to do the one-on-one -on -one, um, with clients. There are a lot of people who have contributed so much to the Center for Core Innovation and aren't here for various reasons. I think that throughout the years we've lost uh, uh, a lot of special individuals that have impacted our professional life. I remember, you know, being mentored by Arlene Ramos, who at the time was a very big presence. Someone who I miss daily, and that's Alfred Siegel. Right? Um, I think he was the grandfather to all of CCI. Um, he was that uncle and he was someone who had a special ability to tap in and to build people's skills. Is it true that softball teams throughout the city tremble when they hear the name Seagull Slugger? It's very true actually. We are a powerhouse and the cool thing about our team that Al would have loved is that we have representatives from all the boroughs and a lot of the different projects. We have entry level staff, we have director level staff, and it just brings One, us all two, together. Three.
I also ask people to give me their favorite adjectives to describe the center. We're curious, groundbreaking, supportive, courageous, diverse, thoughtful, cool, <laughs> passionate, data-driven, dedicated, in the trenches, entrepreneurial, visionary, transformative, inspiring, adventurous, diverse, humane, humble, expanding, dynamic, awesome, practical, motivating, inspirational, approachable, inquisitive, multifaceted, problem-solving, redemptive, groundbreaking, Strategic. Curious. Systems changing. Caring. Collaborative. Supportive. Progressive. Impactful. Caring. Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. It was a pleasure. So now I know a lot more about the Center for Court Innovation than I did before. The Center is our amazing staff. It's our clients. It's our partners. It's all the amazing stuff we do developing new programs, helping others launch their own innovations, and doing research so we know what works and what doesn't. And even though the work is hard and challenging, it's also fun. I'm in awe. Happy anniversary, Center for Court Innovation. Happy 20th anniversary, Center for Court Innovation. Happy 20th anniversary. Thank you for the time that you've allowed me to be here. It's been a long, strange trip, but it's been great. It's been a great 20 years. You're not getting older, you're getting better. May we have another 20 more together. You will always be in my heart. Congratulations. And to you, Greg Berman, thanks for everything. Looking forward to the next 20 years. Happy 20th anniversary. Happy 20th anniversary on a job well done. Happy 20th anniversary. Happy 20th anniversary. From all of us at North Community Solutions, we would love to wish you a happy anniversary, CCI. Woo! Are we going to do cut, cut, because you know us movie stars? <laughs>